tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This from the Australian Associated Press. Is that related to the American Associated Press? I have no idea. Here it is. Marriage is a constant source of joy. But introducing children into the relationship will send your happiness into a downward spiral, a conference has been told. Marriage, money, and children were conventionally considered to be the cornerstone of happiness. But such thinking did not stand up to scientific scrutiny. This, according to Harvard University psychology professor Daniel Gilbert, there was a conference in Sydney called the Happiness and Its Causes Conference. According to scientific and economic research, only marriage proved to be a constant source of joy. Professor Gilbert said, quote, Figures that show married people are in almost every way happier than unmarried people. Whether they are single, divorced, cohabiting. He said married people live longer. Married people earn more per capita. And he claims married people have more sex and enjoy it more. He said married people seem to be happier on every dimension that you can imagine. He said money can also buy happiness, just as not as much happiness as people think. He said money buys you a lot of happiness at first, then it buys you less and less. Every dollar, he says, buys you less happiness as the dollar before, and you reach a point where money is doing almost nothing for your happiness. Well, Professor Gilbert, if you had money and you were out here in the field with somebody like me, you would know you're wrong. But that's beside the point. How many professors have any money? He says, but it's never the case that more money makes you sadder. He said, if you get millions and millions of dollars, and I can confirm this, you never get depressed about it. And he said, despite the belief that children were the apples of our eyes, they actually had, listen to this, children had a negative impact on happiness. Professor Gilbert said, the more kids you had, the sadder you were likely to be. Says here, U.S. and European studies had shown that people's happiness did spike when they were expecting a baby, but sharply plummeted after the child was born. The low point came when children reached the ages of 12 through 16 and recovered only when the children had flown the coop. He said, in reality, children do seem to increase happiness as long as you're expecting them. But as soon as you have them, trouble sets in. He said, people are extremely happy before they have children. And then their happiness goes down. And then it takes another big hit when kids reach adolescence. When does it come back to its original baseline? Oh, said Professor Gilbert, around the time the children grow up and go away. Explaining why these statistics conflicted with most people's view of parenthood, Professor Gilbert made the unusual comparison to buying a pair of Armani socks. He said, when people own Armani socks, they can't stop telling you they are the best socks, the most amazing socks. But I suspect that one of the reasons the people who own Armani socks think they are wonderful is because they've paid $85 for a pair. He said the psychologists tell us that we like things more when we pay for them. What does that sound like? It sounds like children. We pay for them in time, attention, blood, sweat, and tears. What kind of idiots would we be to devote all of that to the rearing of our young if they didn't bring us some happiness? The fact that parenthood crowded out all other things in life could explain why we consider children our greatest source of joy, he said. He said, parents tell me all the time, my child is my greatest source of joy. My reply is, yes, when you only have one source of joy, it's bound to be your greatest. So bottom line in this story, 
is that it's the having children that makes your life miserable when you're married. And having children means happiness plummets. Now, I've been talking to you guys about having kids. I've been talking to you guys about getting married. Most people want to get married and at some point intend to have kids. And this is something you can look forward to. Once she has the kid, your life will be miserable. And there's Professor Daniel Gilbert of Harvard University laying it all out for you. One thing I have never regretted, not for a moment, and I'm sitting here now, I will be 52 years old this year. One of the things I have never regretted is not having kids. I never lose a wink of sleep wondering where anybody is, wondering if anybody is having sex, wondering if anybody is getting arrested, wondering if anybody is falling out a window. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. With the kids are sticking their fingers in electric sockets or falling into the bathtub with a curling iron. I have never had to think about those things. And life couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. I know many of you who are in denial love to call in and yell at me and tell me how wrong I am and I'm just making this stuff up. Trust me when I tell you. Not having kids the best thing I ever did for myself. I love kids, love hanging out with kids, been around kids. Absolutely am crazy about them. I'm crazy about, uh, you know, uh, the horses too. <laughs> I, where I just bought my new home that's surrounded by horses. Nothing I love better than pulling up uh, to where some horses are gathered uh, near a fence, stopping over, petting them, talking to them. I think it's fantastic. Do I want to clean their stable? No. Do I want to be responsible for them when they get sick? Absolutely not. My wonderful, fantastic Seven-year-old nephew, his name is Ryan, he turned seven in November. I can't get enough, he's fantastic. But what I like best is that my brother and his wife have to pick him up at school every day, have to drop him off at school. They have to deal with him when he, uh, you know, is a bit cranky, tired. Me, I get the best of Ryan, the best. I'm the visitor, I came from far away. We play video games together. We talk. He shows me his dog. <laughs> it's all good. But I have no responsibility. And one thing that's never made sense to me in life is how so many people think it's important to have responsibilities. I mean, there are enough responsibilities that you can't run from, like paying the rent or taking care of your finances, you know, making sure you've got health insurance, making sure if you get sick you can afford to go to the doctor, making sure you can afford to eat. My view is I've already got enough responsibility. Why would I want to add more responsibilities? Why would I want to support a wife? Why would I want to support a child? Why would I want to uh, run the risk of being taken to family court if the relationship doesn't work out? I have enough responsibilities as it is. People love to call men like me immature or say we never grow up. But the reality is if somebody wants to take on as little responsibility as possible, if somebody only wants to have enough responsibility that, you know, you take care of the basics, eating, washing your private parts, having a roof over your head, having some money in the bank, what's wrong with wanting to keep the number of responsibilities as low as possible? And as you see here, adding those little crumb-crunching responsibilities may not make you as happy as you think. What do you think about that? Sound like, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? What would that mean literally? It would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw her out. It's the Tom Likey Show. Tom Likas Show. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. There you go. And you have kids, happiness plummets in your marriage. <laughs> Another thing I never did. Holly, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Holly. Now, I'm not going in because I'm necessarily a fan of getting married myself. I think I'm enjoying being single way too much. But I do think that for couples that are planning on having children, the best way would be within a marriage relationship. And I think that if everybody had the same mentality that you do, sanity would basically be extinct. But you see, everybody everybody will never have the same uh, opinion that I have and will never do the same thing I did. But if uh, people were smart about it, uh, only the uh, dumb and the poor would uh, procreate, which they will continue to do anyway. Okay, you think only the dumb and the poor would procreate, therefore survival of the fittest is completely reversed. Well, keep in mind, uh, for example, my parents were not Mensa graduates. Uh, uh, my dad was not a high school graduate. Uh, uh, you know, I got here, became multimillionaire. Uh, having rich, successful parents does not guarantee you'll be rich and successful. But aren't you glad that your parents believed in having kids? I mean, aren't you glad to have an opportunity to live? Oh, well, the point is, uh, am I glad? I wouldn't know the difference if I hadn't been born. Wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> Okay, but I mean, right? obviously there has to be something said for, you know, creating another life and giving it a good environment, which is a marriage relationship. I mean, why would I want to do that? Okay, well, if you want to do it, that's a whole other story, and I think you no, should get married, especially all right, after but, everything you've been But through. the reality is, I think there's a lot of people who don't want to do it. They do it because they're pushed into it, or because their parents want to be grandparents, or because their friends are doing it, or because there's a guy who's got a really hot piece of ass, and she's going to cut him off if he doesn't marry her. Many of them don't want to get married. Absolutely, and I think a lot of the people that you talk to on this show, I mean, I've noticed from the times that I've listened to you, the demographic and the types of guys that call in, they probably shouldn't be getting married because their mentality isn't one that do a good job as a husband. But those people that call in that are really excited about their wife, that really love her, you know, those types of couples, I think that they should be bringing babies into this world. I mean, okay, I don't know if they should, but I think that it's a good it's a good thing. It's not something that you should Well, be, they're under no obligation you know, to do it, and they shouldn't feel obligated to do it. And in fact, the quality of their marriage and the quality of their life would probably be a lot better. If what? If they uh, didn't have children. <laughs> but it's such a selfish point of view. I Why, mean, what is selfish about it? Everything people me, I do. I love being single. I love. I, I see so many of my friends. I'm 26 years old. They're getting married off. You know, they're popping out kids, and they, you know, that's all they talk about now. Oh, she's walking this and that, and I'm not ready for that. Absolutely not. But I see them, and I think you know what? That's that's something that makes them happy, and more power to them. You know, I don't I don't think you should necessarily be preaching against it as something. I'm just saying, why do it? Why do it unless you have a gun to your head? <laughs> what do you mean unless you have a gun to your head? <laughs> well, you know, there's some guys who just want to keep getting that great piece of ass, and in order to get it, the price of admission is reproducing. <laughs> But, uh, you really my, think that? You really? Think oh that? yes, I talk to those guys. I talk to those guys all the time. Okay, I believe you. Like you always say, you know, that there's the exception to the rule, but there are men that really love their wives, want to bring a child into the world with. Well, there there are men who love their wives. They're also uh, they're also men who jump off a forty story uh, building and survive. There are there are men who've done that. I'm sorry. Forty stories is pretty. High. Some have survived. <laughs> But that doesn't mean everybody should go up to the 40th floor. But do you agree with me at least um, when I say that when a man is in love with a woman and wants to bring a child into the world, there's nothing wrong with that? Uh, put it this way. If a man wants to do that, he should remember that getting married will be much more costly than not getting married. And there's no benefit to the man to get married. So even if there's a prenup and they're planning on having a kid on purpose, not because someone slipped up, you still don't think marriage should ever the, what, be well, That man does not gain anything from 
or the woman if she's richer. I, I really, you know, again, I, I advise men on this. Women generally tend to benefit from marriage, and men don't. So, in a Tom like his perfect world, nobody gets married, no one has kids, and in about two thousand one hundred. No, no, it's. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to live in a perfect world. I realize my world is going to be full of uh, people who, frankly, uh, do stupid things, shoot themselves in the foot. I mean, for example, I've said on this program, I want uh, teenage boys to knock up their girlfriends. And the reason <laughs> is I want the cost of doing my landscaping kept low. I also want those 1995 oil changes to continue. My God, if these stupid kids didn't knock up their girlfriends, they'd charge a lot more for labor. Why? Because they wouldn't be so desperate. Right. Exactly. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they ignore my advice, knock up their girlfriends, get nailed for child support, and they've got to work three jobs. <laughs> and I got a message to one of those guys who were washing my windows a couple of weeks ago. You missed a spot. <laughs> oh, Tom, you're funny. I, I, I want, believe me, I want, I want the guys to keep getting themselves into this kind of trouble. Keep knocking up chicks. That keeps labor costs low. You know what else it does? It, right. uh, it it keeps uh, the cost of uh, like uh, supporting California universities keeps the cost low. Most of these guys have no time to go to school. I still think that you're glad that your parents don't have your mentality. You wouldn't be here talking about it again. Uh, everybody's and happy to be here, family. but why would I want that responsibility? Why would anybody? If it's a loving family that's ready to take on something like that. You know, that's the but here's the thing. Right Why now. do you want to take on more? This is the part I don't understand about people. Why take on more responsibility? Most people can't handle the responsibilities they already have. Like I said, I've never felt it myself, but I've seen couples that they're just so excited to have a baby, and maybe when but I'm they, but the thing is, many of them haven't many of them haven't lived with it any period of time. Didn't you hear what that story what? said? I just read to you uh, uh, quotes from a Harvard professor. Yes, I did. Who studied this subject? Everybody's happy when they're pregnant. Everybody's happy when they're having the baby. Everybody. But after you have the baby, happiness Postpartum drops off a cliff. Postpartum depression, Tom. Huh? Postpartum depression. Fine. Who wants to go through that? <laughs> I have no idea. That's the well, only. Well, that's my time point. I wish I was a man. Are you kidding me? That, but you don't have to be a man. Just don't have a have a prepartum uh, getting knocked up, and then you don't have a postpartum anything. <laughs> I still haven't decided if I want to have kids, but I probably won't. I'm just saying for those, you know, they're out there, and I see they're genuine. They really are excited about it. So I just don't think there's anything wrong with that. As long as they're smart about it, they're with someone in a committed relationship. They're not, what you know, does that even mean these days, being in a committed relationship? Half of all marriages end in divorce. What about the other half? Uh, well, out of the other half, there's a number of people who are miserable and don't get out of the marriage because... The sake of the kids, cost of a divorce, uh, religious reasons, the stigma of getting divorced. So you have to admit, more than half the people who get married are not happy about it. <laughs> I don't really know why they do it either. But, I mean, my parents have right. been married for 55 years. <laughs> but uh, did I go out and buy tickets the next week after I met him? No, but, Tom, I mean, you're saying, you know, you're acting like it's one in a million when you just said it, 50% in divorce, which means 50% end in marriage. Yes, I mean, don't end in marriage. They don't end. And yes, you're saying some of them are miserable. I'd be willing to bet that not as many as you think are miserable. You know, All, it, need, all it has to be is more than half, and that's too many for me. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. And then not having children? Are you kidding me? Let me tell you what I'm about to do. While others are planning their Disney cruises for the summer... We're planning their week at Legoland down there in the suburbs of San Diego. Uh, I am planning uh, two weeks in France, a week in Paris, and then I'm going to get on a train and I'm going to go to Bonn, which is in the center of Burgundy. And I'm going to spend uh, eight days between uh, Burgundy and Champagne. 
And those are not brand names of, 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 of beverages. Those are places. I'm going to do a tasting at Dom Perignon, a vertical tasting. <laughs> so while others are uh, deciding whether they want the Captain Crunch chicken for breakfast or the Cheerios, I'm going to be eating foie gras, and I'm going to be drinking some of the finest wines man has ever known. By yourself? If I do it right. Really? So you'd prefer to have all those memories and experiences alone? Darling, I can have plenty of memories and experiences without paying thousands of dollars for someone to enjoy them with me. <laughs> I thought that's what you said you'd do, though, with all the hot chicks that you have to pay. You know, you have to be rich to have them. But, but that's my point. The trick is you take your vacations alone. You go to the great restaurants with buddies. Sometimes I go on vacation with uh, friends of mine. We all go at the same time to the same place. Fifteen of us went to the Napa Valley a few years ago. But why, uh, why would I want to spend thousands of dollars on some chick who I won't even be with in a year or two or three? I don't know. How many times did you do that with all your ex-wives? I guess you have learned, huh? I have learned. <laughs> and now, now, if I want to bang a chick, I'll say, well, I'll, I'll talk to you when I get back from my vacation. This is the thing, Tom. I'm more of the mentality that, like, whatever works for you. Like, that works for you. And the girls that you get with that technique or whatever you call it, that works for them. So it's perfect, you guys. It's for each other. It works for many. But on the same, you know, on the same note, couples that really care about each other and want to bring a child into the world, so there's a a place for them, too. I and think uh, that, it, uh, and as we have found on this program over the years, in many cases, you have a woman who wants to bring a child into the world and a man who doesn't like confrontation. <laughs> well, men need to get some balls. Oh, if they I do. Want they to have a kid, I want do. my husband to let me know if he wanted, you know, if he didn't want one, I'd want to know that. Well, but many times men just get sick and tired of the arguing, and they just give in. But it's a deal with that. That's what's going on out there. And these guys call me, so I know it's happening. <laughs> All right, darling, anyway, I'm going to move on, but I, I thank you very much for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Sarah on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Great topic. How are you today? Doing great. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. I think people should... Uh, popping out children when they're not ready for it, when they, when they cannot be responsible to give them efficient education, um, raise them correctly, and because it's just going to be problematic. And, you know, I'm 27, and my, you know, I'm, most people around me usually by this age have children, they're married, blah, 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 but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those I think having children is like a kind of a uh, how should I explain it? It's a uh, it's a selfish act. People like to have a little miniature of themselves. I mean, it's a nice gesture in a way. You know, kids are cute and everything, but seriously, there are too, way too many irresponsible parents out there, and I think people should really give it a second thought before having children. So. Plus, when you have children, you cannot have the financial freedom to have as much of a great, you know, few points if you want to travel. You know, I see I see these people who travel with children. They have to stay at, like, crappy places. or It's just uh, you have to cut back a lot in life. So I agree with you 100%. Yeah, who wants to cut back? Not me. I'll, yep. I'll let you guys know when I'm in Burgundy. Uh, just how much uh, cutting back I'm doing. Well, yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. You know, I'm uh, I'm making a I'm making a good living. So does my boyfriend, and you know, we take great vacations. And but we thought about it. You know, if you want to have children, it's not going to be this way. We have to stay properly. You know, we can't. We wouldn't be able to afford to, you know, stay at four seasons. We probably have to stay at, you know, a cheaper place. Because there would be kids involved, and you know it wouldn't be as fun, and it's just going to be a total different lifestyle. And it's a personal preference; some people like that, but you know, it's just again having children is a huge, 
huge responsibility. People really underestimate how important it is to raise a child correctly. So that's all I have to say about it, and totally agree with you. Keep up the good work. Sarah, thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is... Me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our phone, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like a show at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Oh, uh, yes, a professor from Harvard University now saying that uh, when you're married, oh, you're happy, happy, happy until you get pregnant. And then uh, you're happy about that, too. But once the baby is born, happiness plummets. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Clark on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Clark. Hello, Tom. Yes. I should say son. Yes, yes, indeed. Generally, Tom, I agree with most of the things you uh, uh, profess. But I have to disagree on the last two issues you've uh, brought up. One is wine. I think the best wine in the world is made in Northern California. I think Northern California has great wine, but it's not the only wine. Well, it's not the only wine, but I think it's the best. Everybody has their own taste. That's true. And I have spent an awful lot of time in Napa and Sonoma, Alexander Valley, Russian River. I know it all. I can drive it the way I can drive Los Angeles. I drive it like a cab driver. I, I know it really, really well. Okay. Uh, but um, I do think it's the best value. I do think, though, there are some uh, Bordeaux's uh, that uh, 10 years after you buy them will still be fantastic, and some California wines that were great for 10 years that sometimes think, fall off a cliff. I think for some unknown reason, French wine holds its value and American wine doesn't. Well, I think it's but because American French wine uh, has a better tannic structure in many cases. And therefore, it uh, ages better over the long haul. Now, the fact is, most Americans, uh, when they uh, buy a bottle of wine, drink it within 36 hours after purchase. And so none of that really matters to Americans. But if you're like me and you have a wine cellar, I like to have California wine and French wine. Wines I can drink now and wines I'm more likely to drink later. Okay. Don't disagree. I just was, uh, you're making the trip to uh, Bordeaux and Champagne? No, Burgundy and Champagne. I was in Burgundy. Bordeaux previously, yes. Okay. And uh, I was just, when I heard that, I just it had to comment that I thought the best wines in the world were in Northern California. Didn't they get all our, their vines from us? Uh, well, actually, it's gone both ways. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. I mean, keep in mind that uh, the Napa Valley uh, suffered from uh, a problem called phylloxera. Uh, which is a problem that France suffered back at the turn of the 20th century. And many of the vines in the Napa Valley had to be pulled out. And they were replaced with the rootstocks of Bordeaux, which were resistant to phylloxera because they'd already been through the scourge of phylloxera. God, now I'm drinking hybrids. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> now, the other issue I wanted to bring up was traveling outside of the continental United States. What about it? I think it's foolish. Why? Um, there's people out there who would love to kill an American just because he's an American. Yeah, but uh, none of them live in Burgundy or Champagne. I can tell you that. Ooh, relatively close in Spain. and I've been to Spain. What do you think is wrong in Spain? Well, I don't know. It was about four years ago they blew up a bunch of people over there. Yeah, but they weren't from blowing up Americans. Most of the victims were from Spain. Well, they they were trying. 
No, they were not trying to blow up Americans. They were trying to blow up Spaniards. And the reason they were trying to blow up Spaniards is because the group that did it, which is called ETA, E-T-A, uh, is a group of Basque separatists who want a separate country for the Basque region of Spain. Yes, I agree with that. So why would they kill Americans to get that? Um, I don't know why they would kill Americans. They, they would. See, see, the thing is, Clark, I have the benefit of having been to these places. And if you had been to these places, you'd be better versed on what's going on out there. Well, I've never been to Europe, but I've been all over the Orient. I highly recommend it. Believe me, you're missing out if you don't go. Colin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Uh, not much, you tell me. I'm just calling about the uh, the marriage thing. I'm married with kids, and uh, I'm happy to be married. So Wonderful. I, I mean, uh, honestly, so you're the guy who won the lottery. That's show, you're the I guy who that. won the lottery. That's fantastic. Hey, I agree. I'm I can be considered an exception because I see all this other you know stuff going on around me. But you know, I waited till I was 30 to get married. Great. Well, that's you know, fantastic. I went out there and I banged it out. I so what does that Diego. prove? What does that prove? That proves that, you know, marriage works, man. I'm happy. No, no. I, well, I, I, then I, I guess I guess you also believe that someone's going to win the Irish sweepstakes. Someone will win. It just probably won't be you. No, no. I mean, we, we wouldn't be where we are as a society today without marriage. I don't you know, happen to agree with that at all. I mean, this, this conception that marriage doesn't work is primarily just, you know, in the last 20, 30 years. This is, we, this is when we live. We live in the present. We don't live in the past. Well, I, you could, would you agree that as a whole, society seems to be taking a uh, downturn? No, I actually wouldn't. Actually, I think uh, uh, that uh, between technology and uh, the ability to travel and literacy... At the Internet and satellite communications, in many ways, life is way better than it ever was. Uh, and some, oh, sure, there are exceptions, as you would say. But Those are not exceptions. Oh, that, all these, you know, these uh, child rapists and the teachers and all this crap going on. I mean, you got to agree that there's been some breakdown in society where general... Decency is not. Uh, I, I happen to believe. I happen to believe stuff like that always happened. I believe that because of technology now, whether it be people with a cell phone camera making videos and posting them to YouTube, or the news media of cable TV and the internet and what have you, I think you're more likely to find out about stuff that's going on that was once kept a deep dark secret. Yeah, you know, I agree with you on that aspect because the only way they sell news nowadays is from horror stores. You don't hear, they don't sell news on good, feel good stories. They, they never did. They never did. The New York Daily News, sometime before 1920, sold the most copies ever by having front page photographs of an execution. Right. So th right. this right. is not a new phenomenon. And if you knew about the history of the news media, you would know that that's what the news media have always done. William Randolph Hearst, the famous publisher upon whom the movie Citizen Kane was based, right? He he personally is cited as the reason for the start of the Spanish-American War. <laughs> so if you think this is some new phenomenon that the news media are reporting negative news and that's what makes people buy a newspaper or watch TV, guess again. Well, I, I just got to say, you know, I'm I'm completely happy being married. I couldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I, you know, of course. Uh, it, but really, in all honesty, I wasn't. Uh, I was barely able to pay bills until I got married. It wasn't until I got married that I added those responsibilities to my life. Did my career excel? Well, so that's your I'm own fault. But that's your money. own fault. You know what? You uh, maybe you're the kind of person who needs marriage. Somebody who's not self-motivated. Somebody who's Absolutely irresponsible. Not motivated. So yeah, you're pretty All right, so you need you aspect. need to be nagged. You know what? I don't need to be nagged. I do not need nagging. I I do what needs to get done. By the way, I maintain two households now. Two. Well, and nobody needs married. to tell me nobody needs nag. to tell me <laughs> when to, nobody needs to tell me when to clean up the property or when the garbage needs to go out. I don't need to be nagged. All right, you don't need to brag, man. <laughs> and the reason I can afford two pieces of real estate is because I don't have to give half of everything I make to some chick who's going to spend it at Starbucks and I'm buying a new SUV every two years. Oh, yeah, I had to redo my kitchen this weekend. Well, so, there you yeah. go. 
<laughs> You're making my point for me. No, no, no. You make a lot of great points, but I'm just saying, you know, in general, I think uh, marriage, you just can't generalize and say it's terrible overall. There are exceptions to the rule. I never, I again, exactly I, as, I, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Of yeah, course, there are. Good points. Well, thanks, Tom. I appreciate the time. I want to take right. yeah. with the good feel good. But take me out Kobe style, please. I don't take you out Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 You know, these people who call here, they say, well, I'm happily married, so therefore marriage is a good thing. You ever hear somebody say, well, I know lots of people get addicted to heroin, but I can quit at any time. Yes, I know cocaine is a terribly addictive uh, habit, but guess what? Sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. I mean, the fact that something is good for an individual does not mean it's good for the majority of us. And I guess, yes, marriage is good for unmotivated individuals who need to be nagged and need to be uh, feeling like they're in boot camp all the time. I guess people like you need to be married. I'm not one of them. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mario on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you, Tom? I'm great. Good. Uh, uh, I guess in your words, in your point of view, here's another lotto winner. Um, I believe uh, this is all about maturity and being able to receive and give love. You know, it has nothing to do with... No, no, stop right there. Stop right there. It has nothing to do with maturity. It has to do with everybody has uh, the the things the way they want them in life. And uh, the fact that I like having a life without having to answer to all these other people does not make me less mature than you. All right. And uh, let me just say this. That I think uh, the problem here, the, the second thing I was saying is that uh, it also has to do with being able to receive and give love, of which, unfortunately, I believe you can't. Oh, I can yeah. receive and give love. I just don't have to sign a contract to no, do no. it. No, no, I'm not talking about resigning. You have to sign a contract. You have to sign your life away in order to get love. No. You see, I, I see it from a completely about. different perspective. Here's somebody who can't get love unless he agrees to pay a woman. Look, uh, Tom, you reject... Women. Do not, I do not reject women. Well, you reject women in the sense that you feel that they're not, you, you, someone does not have to marry a person. That's correct. That's not a rejection of women. That's saying I don't have to sign a contract and turn over half of my income in order yeah. to find love. Okay, but you don't want to commit either, right? You know, I, I can be committed without signing a contract. Okay, but you can't be committed because you just want to... There's no need to be... By the way, there is no need to be committed. There's no need. Why why does a man need to be committed? You were married four times, okay? Right. What type of person or a brain you have that you couldn't see that the first time you couldn't... Well, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter now that I've learned my lesson. I will never... Sign over a portion of my income to anyone else ever again. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.